Hey, Ashguy1370 here. Welcome to... Welcome back to E3 2017. And I am here... Here to stream my reaction to the Ubisoft conference. And I hope it was better than Bethesda's because they're... Basically, them trying to... Trying to do that Nintendo Direct crap. What were you thinking, Bethesda? Really, what? I mean, really, what were you thinking? God, I, I really can't believe they thought that was a good idea. Ugh. However, we did get some really interesting games. Uh, we got a new Evil Within. Uh, we've got the new uh, Wolfenstein. We've got we've got a few. Uh, we, we, we've got a few uh, good games coming from Bethesda. I don't know why they didn't think to maybe make the Doom VFR more like Fallout 4's VR, where you're not having to basically do the do like the jump pads like like uh, like what every other VR uh, uh, experience does like 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 the same thing that Batman Arkham VR does where you have to go where you basically need to need to aim your uh, need to aim at where you want to go click X and there you go I mean I, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea I, I really don't uh, I mean, I mean, really, really, they they should have made it to where to where Doom was more where you had had a had the ability to freely move around with with, with a controller, so that everything would be in 3D. That would be a lot more awesome. That that would be. Uh, the. Yeah, hang on, wait. But, but yeah, I I will never know why they thought that was a good idea. Oh, they don't. Do they not have? Uh, wait, let Let's look at that. Do they not have Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb this time around? Apparently not. Uh, what was? Uh, one th one thing that uh, what one person actually brought up about the new Wolfenstein game was that was that how how it seems like they're going for more like uh something out of red dawn this time around where everything is uh uh let me let me switch it back up to okay, let, let's do four 480 here that seems to be be the best one to use uh but yeah i don't know why people thought it would be Oh god, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, what do we have? Already talked about Doom VR. Uh, but what time is it? It is three fifty-three. Uh. You know what? You know what? I'm good. You know what? I'm 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 gonna take uh, take a break, and uh, when we come back, uh, the Ubisoft conference should begin. Because right now I'm focused on on what I'm seeing here, so we will be right back.
for a couple of nights, need to rebuild myself to come alive. It all makes sense now, now that the lights out. It's a different world to me, it makes me feel down. Wait until the storm comes down. Looks like they uh, changed their uh, logo again. I 
Ah, the rabbits. Whoa, 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 wait. What's with, um, what's with the Moro stuff? No way. Are they teaming up with Nintendo? Are they teaming up with Nintendo? Hello. Hello, everyone. And thank you. We've always wondered what could happen if our crazy rabbits were unleashed upon the world of Mario. Today, what? And to talk about this unexpected encounter, it is my great honor to welcome a very special guest, someone I truly admire. Please. Oh my God! Oh my god, they're teaming up with Nintendo! Oh my god! Dude, they are teaming up with Nintendo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Mario, Mar Mario and Rabbids. Oh my so God! Oh, you. Where, you oh my <laughs> God! Is Rayman gonna be there too? Because that's where, because that's where the Rabbids come from. They were originally, they were originally uh, uh, creatures from the Rayman series. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. He can have yeah, our conversation. Okay. These are a little bit different from the weapons you see in Ghost Recon. <laughs> yeah, very different weapons for cute. very different worlds. Uh, this one is, I think, very effective in the, the world of Myron and Rabbit. So, should do well. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm so proud. Let me of Ubisoft long-standing collaboration. Let me with let me open up a search for that. The that Wii that and uh, more recently for the impressive launch of the Switch. You know, it has always been we have always been inspired by Nintendo and by all the great work you've been able to do. Yes, thank you very much for all the work that we've been able to do together over the years with Ubisoft. I mean, Eves, it's already been about 25 years since you and I first met. And every year at E3, you're kind enough to invite me to your booth, and we get to take lots of pictures and videos, and I've even recorded messages for Ubisoft employees in the past. <laughs> so over the years, I've always felt the deep, heartfelt passion that Ubisoft developers have for Nintendo and its characters. But on the other hand, uh, because we're both software developers, we've also looked at each other as kind of yeah. rivals and, and sure. tried to see who could make the best software. <laughs> but of course, I've known the Rabbids characters for many years, and I have many Rabbids figures uh, decorating my desk. Wow. Um, and so I've always been a fan of the characters and their humor. 
だから今回の話があった時にダビッツがどんなユーモアをこうゲームの中で見せてくれるかすごい楽しみにしてた、uh, so since this project first started I've been very excited to see what kind of humor the rabbits could bring to the Mario world <笑>でただだあのダビッツさんに会った時にね、うん、ダビッツさんに一つだけお願いしたんです So when I met、uh, Davide san, who is the、uh, creative director of this game. <laughs> yeah. yes.、uh, when, I, when I met Davide san, I had just, just one condition for this project. I said, whatever you do, don't try to make a, a jump game or a Mario platformer. Try to make a Mario game that has never been made before. <laughs> it's, and it's great. And I can tell you, it was an exciting, very、uh, exciting challenge for all our teams. And I think we've done something you will love. So, thank you very much for giving us the chance to, to perform on this game. こうヨーロッパで作るとこんなものができるのかとかね、それから、えっと、UBI さん、やっぱりアクションゲームをちゃんと作ってる会社なんで、こうストラテ単性のストラテジーゲームというもののちゃんとこうテンポのいいゲームが出来上がりました。So, of course, because the, the game is being made in Europe, it has a very unique flavor to it.、Um, and of course, Ubisoft is very good at making action games. Uh, but this game in particular has a great layer of strategy and tactics to it,、uh, but with a very good pace. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fresh, actually.、Uh, so now let's welcome Xavier, you know, the, the producer of the game, and he will show us the game. Yeah, again, yeah, show us some gameplay here. Thanks again, Miyamoto. That's the thing, show us some gameplay here, come on. Finally, finally, we can talk about this project. So, we've been working on this game for more than three years. No dead air, man. To Come on. Three today on this stage is just、uh, super exciting. So, what is this game exactly? So, Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is a tactical adventure exclusive for the Nintendo Switch. And let's check right away some gameplay. There we go. So, the rabbits have been teleported into the,、uh, the Mushroom Kingdom, and it made the world completely unstable and chaotic. A little bit flat, so、though. Mario, as a true hero, wants to save the day. But this time, with some new friends. <laughs> and at first, they don't really know each other, but in the end, they will form this、uh, dream team that will potentially save the Mushroom Kingdom. And as the game is a turn based tactical adventure game,、uh, combat is a really big part of the concept.、Um, so you'll fight wave after wave of rabbit that somehow turn bad. And、uh, what we see here is just、uh, the very beginning of the game, so it will be perfect to talk about the combat basics.、Uh, so the two flags you see on the screen here is to tell you that this is a battlefield zone. So you'll switch from exploration mode to battle mode. The blue zone is your zone of movement, so you move anywhere you want in that zone. But you can also use battlefield ingredients such as、uh, covers for protection. So, Rabbit Luigi here using half cover or full cover. And、uh, we also have what we call team jump. So, by jumping on your teammates, you can expand your zone of movement. So, here, Rabbit Peach using Mario, she's able to flank the enemy. 
So you can also attack the enemy. Oh, it's also an RPG game. Okay. Um, which is really interesting <coughs> in terms of strategy because uh, for next turn, will be open for uh, attacks. And last but not least, techniques. So from defensive ones, yeah, the like uh, Rabbit Peach shield boost. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. The colors are all like, like faded out and everything. He's able to attack the enemy I'm reading a lot of stuff turn, that I'm seeing on Twitter, and a lot of people are complaining about uh, basically how faded the the colors look on this. And yeah, I agree. Why so why does it look? Cool yeah, why does it look like it's? Itself, so uh, options, movement, yeah, what what? Why does it look like but it's have, uh, so? Ingredients, such as, uh, uh, pipes. What you call it? So uh, those well. Give you, uh, yeah, washed Good out. Move to uh, flank the enemy. So here, for example, Rabbit Luigi goes into the pipe, out of the pipe, dash the enemy, goes for Mario, team jump, land behind the enemy in one single movement sequence, and then. Oh, don't do that now. Finish off the enemy. And what we see uh, here is actually uh, explosive cover. So. The <laughs> Those have many type of uh, super effects, and this one was a push effect, so you can push heroes or enemies out of the uh, boundaries. So again, this is just a glimpse into the basics of the game, and as you progress into the game, uh, you have more tactic tools, you'll be able to do more combo setups, you'll be able to use different type of heroes, different type of weapons, in order to battle your way through uh, the kingdom. Ow. Thank you. And that's and that's just uh, a glimpse into the game itself. But um, first and foremost, this is a project done with passion, with our hearts. So it would not exist otherwise. So we just can't wait for you guys to try the game at E3 this week. Uh, for those who are not at E3, you'll see online coverage, videos, and surprises. So have a great conference. Have a great E3. Thank you. That looks pretty good, but, but don't, but, just don't have the colors all washed out, like, like, don't do what Marvel's doing with, with the, uh, washed out, with the washed out look, the washed out yet colorful look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a rabid Donkey Kong on oh, no. a... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh wow, it's coming out in oh in two months. Oh wow. So yeah, it's coming out in two months. That's cool. That's cool. Yep, I was wondering if they were going if this was going to be Assassin's Creed. Hi, I'm Ashraf Fismel, game director for Assassin's Creed Origins. I've waited a long time to say that. <laughs> Almost ten years ago, I, as many of you, fell in love with a game. That game took us to the Third Crusade, and we fell in love again when it took us to the Italian Renaissance. Over the years, this amazing series has taken us to the American Revolution, the French Revolution, Victorian London, and of course, to the Republic of Pirates. For the 10-year anniversary of Assassin's Creed, for our fans, the hell was that? for ourselves, and for all newcomers, we wanted to go back, very far back, to show how it all began. Since Black Flag, over the last three and a half years, we have poured our energy, our talent, our passion into bringing the land of pyramids, pharaohs, and mummies to life, to bring ancient Egypt to life. Now Egypt challenged us. It fundamentally challenged us to reinvent what it means to be Assassin's Creed. And over the next few days, you will see, play, and feel this reinvented experience. I am deeply honored and proud to be here representing the amazing work of a phenomenal team and thrilled to finally be able to show you this beast we have been building. Without further ado, here is a taste of Egypt. Too bad the majority of, of people will not be able to see the 4K footage. Because what, like only what, like 20% of all television, of, of all people who have televisions uh, have 4K right now? down here sounds like yeah F copy copyrighted rated music right here That was cool. That was cool. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as an extra treat, let's check in with home base where we're going to get a glimpse of ah! what we'll see right after the UB conference. Hey there, folks. Chris Waters here at the home base with Hanny Duong and Carl Lewip. He was attacked by a killer camera. <laughs> uh, Carl's here to give us a look at the gameplay of the game. We're going to be entering the open world. We've got a ton more to show you, but Carl, kick it off. Give us a little taste here. Yeah, so here we are in the open world of, of Egypt. This is the demo that we will be showing on the, the show floor here at E3. Bayek is riding into the Fayoum, one of the, the regions in Egypt, this most southernmost region. It's a, a beautiful area. We see we've come in from the desert, moving towards this uh, Lake Morris. And uh, let's have a little exploration around here using our eagle. Let's see. 
It's sunny on the lake and it's sunny on the monitor here, but folks, this looks really good. It's running on an Xbox One X. It will be giving you the gameplay feed after the show. We've got 30 minutes of that coming up, but uh, let's see if we can see from a bird's eye view what Senu is up to. Yeah, so Senu is uh, looking into this military camp and tagging a few enemies here. After, after the show, we will infiltrate this camp and take it out either through stealth or combat or perhaps ranged weaponry. All right, if you guys want to see more of this, be sure to tune in right after the conference. Chris and I and Carl here will be right here. Ash will be joining us as well. You won't want to miss it. That 30 minutes live gameplay feed is coming up after the show, but for now, it's back to the stage and on with the excitement. That's it for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So don't forget that you can watch this demo in its entirety after the conference uh, live stream from our home base. And for those of you here at E3, please come to the Ubisoft booth where you can live this new experience of Assassin's Creed. Thank you very much. So, what's this one? Um, Ivory Tower. Hey, here's your chance. A new driving game. Was this the crew too? Excuse me. Ah, the crew too. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two years back, the crew took the driving genre out there to the big, wide, open world of the USA. Thanks to our players, we have taken this iconic vision to the next level. They showed us what they liked and what they wanted to see in the future. Now, it's time to take it way beyond driving. I am Stéphane Bollet, Creative Director. This is The Crew 2. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Here in the US, 
Motorsports are louder, bigger, agier than anywhere else in the world. Drivers and fans meet across the country and celebrate a common passion for all things motorized. Now's your chance to join in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the crew two, home of Mother Nation. They're doing, <laughs> they're doing a Lord song. They're doing that song, that Lord song from Hunger Games. prove their skills skidding on rooftops burning asphalt and tuning their rides Forge your own path off road through the striking beauty of nature. Oh, we're only half hour into this, okay. Tame unpredictable waves on the open ocean, rapid waters, or narrow rivers. Fearless pilot rules the skies, spin between buildings, through the clouds, among stunning, stunning perspectives. Early 2018. That's cool. Thank you. <coughs> All across the country, I octane contests await you. Take the lead on Modern Nation. You've had a glimpse of the crew too. Register now for beta access or Play the demo at the booth. Experience TC2 for yourself. Enjoy the ride. Thank you. Oh, don't do that now. Come on. Dude, don't do that.
Yes! We even started as one team. We all wanted to be superheroes for the same reason. You're a traitor, Tweak, and now you're with a group of super traitors. This was started by you. We aren't the ones who walked out of the fucking franchise, Mysterion. Why would the Freedom Pals help us? We send a spy, someone in our group who pretends to want to switch sides and join Freedom Pals. Somebody who they don't know very well. All that's fair in love is... More freedom, pussy. You fucking animal. You've got problems, new kid. Whatever you did last night got a lot of people's attention. Bad people. If you need information, just know you can rely on... Call girl. Who the fuck is... <laughs> Call girl. <laughs> Toolshed. Toolshed is a catchy tier class visionary archetype. And a butt fucking mm. traitor. Eric, you must listen to me. Get out of my head, Timmy. Your franchise is going nowhere. Face the truth, <laughs> Eric. You guys are kind of douchebags. He just called us douchebags in my mind. He did? South Park, the fractured butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Available October 17th. October 17th. Okay. So, so yeah, October 17th. Please let that be the official release date now. Please. Was this sort of synergy of well, we're huh. looking to do something Elijah Wood. in VR, and we've got this division, and you're looking to sort of bring, you know, what sense you have of storytelling within, and put that into the context of VR. You can, for the first time as a player, feel like you are in a movie. That's a really good word for it. We want you to take off the gear and still feel unsettled. Whilst working with Ubisoft, we stumbled across some fascinating research that had begun in the late 90s. Essentially, neuroscientists had figured out a way to upload brain data, trauma, emo emo emotions, memories, to the digital space. Now, we've gone and taken the next logical step, and with Ubisoft, we've, we've recreated in virtual reality one such test subject. So we'd like you to come and join us and experience the Walter test case for yourself. Oh, it's coming from there. At first I thought it was coming from my phone! Oh my god. Oh, sorry. What you were experiencing is a recorded Sorry. Process. It's not like watching a movie, so no matter how real it may seem, it can't hurt you. You were completely safe. You were completely safe. Transference. Enter the home. Spring 2018. Okay. And now, I'm happy to share a new surprise with you. Building on the legacy of one of our most popular worlds, the super talented teams of Ubisoft Singapore came up with something really, really unique. So I want you to see that and enjoy it. Thank you. Men from all over the world sail the treacherous trade routes of the Indian Ocean. The riches in their homes fuel their dreams of power and fortune, while wetting the appetites of those they fear most. 
pirates. I don't know why... Yeah, I'm getting like a whole bunch of uh, updates happening all at once. All right now for some... This always happens... It's always happening during E3! It's always happening during the conferences! My computer just decides to just do all the freaking... Uh, updates and stuff. I don't know why. Was oh, this another pirate game? Okay, there's also a lot of crazy. Skull and bones. Okay. One hundred twenty days. That's how long the average pirate survived a lawless life on the seas during the golden age of piracy. I'm Justin Fair and the creative director for Skull and Bones. And this is your chance to not just survive, but to climb the food chain and surpass the legend of every pirate who ever sailed the high seas. Since bringing innovative naval combat to Assassin's Creed, we at Ubisoft Singapore have set out to bring you the ultimate pirate experience. A tactical action game where we take that naval combat to the next level, mastering the ocean and its winds at the helm of ships armed to the teeth. Skull and Bones takes place in a shared systemic world where you can sail solo or form a gang of pirates with your friends and together terrorize the trade routes of the Indian Ocean. Season after season, you'll collaborate and compete with other bloodthirsty players, even execute ruthless betrayals in order to become the ultimate pirate kingpin. Now I'm proud to share with you the loot hunt. One of there Skull it and Bones is again. What, what, what is with, with team that? Based PvP mode. What is with that? The, the thing we're right on, showing, right? like something, something wiping off. That merchant convoys rich with treasure are sailing just off the coast of Madagascar. But beware, there are other pirates also looking to plunder the PvP disputed waters of the Indian Ocean. The Priscilla's shallows of Madagascar, located on the cusp of a bustling trade route, it is the perfect place for an ambush. Here is our gang of pirates, the raiders, going head to head with a gang of rival players, the Cutthroats. Victory goes to the team with the most loot at the end of the hunt. So it seems like Ubisoft's going to have their own version of that pirate game that that multiplayer uh, pirate game that uh, uh, Xbox uh, 
yeah, that Sea of Thieves game. This, looks like this one's gonna compete against Sea of Thieves. Rewards, it is best to split up. Some going inland, others keeping to the open sea. Each warship has unique strengths. The frigate's hull is reinforced, its arsenal equipped with numerous culverin cannons. The brigantine is devastating up close, with a battering ram designed to break any resistance. The sloop of war kills from afar, with its crippling long-ranged mortars and precise long nine cannons. Cloud your purpose. You're here for <clears throat> loot, and so are your rivals. Store the goods, then back to your station. The team that escapes with the most loot claims victory. Sorry about that. Searching for more targets on the horizon, our sloop of war spots a rival pirate ship further inland. With its heavily reinforced hull, our frigate swoops in to save the day, bearing the brunt of the damage. Take team coordination to take her down. <clears throat> Looks like this game has had a lot of thought, had a lot more thought put into it than Sea of Thieves did. With the enemy ship's broadside now vulnerable, our frigate rushes in to board her. No Signaling the end of the hunt. They target the pirates with the most stolen loot. Time to make our escape, Captain, or we are good for the news. They're firing mortars! Full tilt, Silvo, full tilt! The pirate hunter defenses are so strong that the only option is escape. The brigantine is sacrificing herself to buy time for the frigate who carries the most loot. Mm. Dang. The frigate now needs to make its escape through the reefs. Captain, that's back to the reefs! Successful pirates know when to run, with their hulls full and the wind at their backs. Sea of Thieves needs to needs to pull something out of their butts now because now because this game looks a lot better than Sea of Thieves. Please register for our live phases online. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention: the world of Skull and Bones is one that evolves. When you act, it reacts. Not 
Giants, yeah. Oh, man. Why am I tired all of a sudden? Just dance. Uh, of course, they would have to bring in Just Dance. It wouldn't be an Ubisoft E three conference without it. Everyone's in, the three are in are in what like 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 electronic uh, Mortal Kombat costumes. Oh, they're bringing in uh, Korean. Uh, are they bringing uh, uh, like like Korean pop uh, music now? Oh, excuse me. I'm trying to think who that is. Yeah, Baby Rexa. Yeah. Baby Rexa. sucks really really her voice sucks when it's not out of her voice sucks when it's not auto-tune god As a camera, it's your music player, your flashlight, calculator, and GPS navigation device. But now, finally, this sounds like something from South Park. The mobile phone's true potential so that it can do what it was truly meant to do. Yep, playing Hey, new kid, we need you to come play with us. Put on some cowboy shit and meet us outside and bring your phone. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, we're playing cowboys and Indians, dickhole. Inuits are technically Native Americans. This new kid puts me to shame. Destroyer. Oh, cool. <laughs> I 
Atlas, Jewel of the Pleiades. Nova took us to the stars. Each new world more incredible than the last. We had no idea what was waiting for us. The Legion. It consumes everything in its path. They've never used Starlink before. Go show them what it can do. What? Wait, what? Let's do this. Come on, come on. I got it. Something with the Amiibo games? Breaking atmosphere. Is this like No Man's Sky but better? Time for me to jump start the engine. They are resisting ice barrage, linking fire loadout. We're up against impossible odds, but together we will adapt and overcome. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's also for PS4 too, okay. So it looks like they're. So it looks like they're trying to do something that's similar to No Man's Sky, but but a million Hi. times better I'm than Matt No Rose, Man's Sky. Producer at Ubisoft Toronto. Like many of you, I grew up in the '80s, obsessed with sci-fi, animation, comics, and of course, all the really cool toys. At Ubisoft Toronto. We built a team with a dream of bringing those amazing childhood memories back to life for a new generation. Starlink Battle for Atlas allows you to take control of a team of star pilots in a massive, open, living star system, fighting to save Atlas from the Forgotten Legion. Build your custom starship, and then adapt to new challenges on the fly. Link extra armor and heavy weapons to take on a huge Legion Prime. Search for ancient, ancient secrets lost on the worlds of Atlas or outrun outlaws through an asteroid field. Freedom is at the core of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Collect your way with both physical Starship collectibles and digital versions available. And even take your game on the go using the power of Nintendo Switch. Cool. Fall 2018. Visit StarlinkGame.com for more information and stay tuned for many more surprises over the coming months. Thank you. That's pretty good. More stuff about Steve. Okay. I'm the studio director at Ubisoft Dancy. It's a pleasure for me to be back on stage after our announcement at E3 last year. And we have had uh, since then a full year of support and continuous development of Steep. Since the very beginning of this project, we have been working with athletes and we have always been impressed by their passion and dedication. We learned how one champion spent 300 days a year on a trampoline to practice for that perfect landing. We learned how others make more than 6 million turns to practice for the 15 they have to race in competition. These athletes, they travel to the world to train with the best, to compete with the strongest, and to challenge themselves with the most experienced and skilled coaches. It's truly a level of passion and dedication that goes well beyond our everyday lives. And when you talk to the very best of these men and women, you realize that there is something they always have in back of their minds at all times. It's a dream that takes years of preparation for just one go at that unforgettable moment. 
This December, with our first steep expansion, this is the journey you will take. Enjoy. I still want to play that game. I missed out on the beta, sadly enough. Enough. I, I really hope I can uh, finally... I, I really hope I can finally uh, be able to play it. Oh, they're doing doing Olympic version. Yeah, they're doing uh, Olympics DLC. Okay. Far Cry? Is this Far Cry? Far Cry! Yes! We're finally getting into Far Cry 5, finally! Some more stuff about Far Cry 5. Hi, my name is Dan Hay, and I'm the executive producer of Far Cry the Brand, as well as the creative director of Far Cry 5. Excuse me. I'd like to introduce you to Hope County, Montana. Vast, beautiful, rugged. A place where people don't even lock their front door anymore. But that's how it used to be. Today, Hope County's been overrun by a fanatical cult. You find yourself trapped deep in cult territory, cut off from the rest of the world. They've closed the roads. There's no cell phone signal, no 911. People are fucking scared. Mm -hmm. I had to say it. <laughs> and just up ahead, the small town of Falls End has been completely overrun. If you're gonna survive, you and your guns for hire are gonna need to save it. But to do that, well, you're gonna need to raise some hell. Oh, here we go. You will be 
Boom, boom, motherfuckers. Boom, 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 mm. boom. Bang, bang, bang. Boom, 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 boom. Behind you. Bang, 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 bang. Gonna need more help. I love the way you walk. And I love the mm. way you talk. When you walk that walk. And you talk that talk. You knocks me out. Oh, nice. Boom, boom, boom. Target a fucking quad. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, this look. Okay, that game looks excellent. I, I actually want to play it. I really do want to play it. What else is there? I don't deal with domesticated. Hey, the fuck? I ain't got no master, mm. but I do have your little toy. Show me the idol. Show me the redeemer. Here you go, mate. What the? Oh. Hey, Jim. Yo, 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 hand it over. I got a hot date. Don't do late. Mm. <laughs> Monkey's got a date. Mm. Mm. Ah. Wh what? 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 That's Swiss fucking chocolate, pig. <laughs> bon appetito. <laughs> Fucking city after that fucking bastard! Mm. Mm. Grab my chassis, Noxy! Easy peasy, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. This looks so interesting. This actually looks very interesting. It's about bloody time. Mm. Let's see what we've got. Moksha. Just as 
Yama described it. True freedom lies beyond. Beyond good and evil. What? Whoa, wait, what? No freaking way! No freaking way! Beyond good and evil 2? Really? Oh my god! Thank you. Thank you very much. They actually made a sequel all, to Beyond Good and Evil. Oh my god. To all the teams who worked very 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 hard on Wow. All, all this all this world. That uh, I did not expect that. I literally did not expect that. Behind us. I want also to say thank you to Eve with all my heart. Thanks Eve for making this happen. This is this is just amazing, uh, and also a special thanks to the fans of Being Good and Evil for sticking with us for so long. It's about bloody time. Fifteen years, <laughs> almost. So welcome to System Three. Our story takes place before the birth of Jade, in a multi-ethnic, multicultural human society in a distant solar system. It is a time when corporations create hybrids in their labs and enslave them to colonize the stars in order to compete for power and cosmic resources. With our crew of crazy and unforgettable characters, we fight in the name of freedom and the right to determine our own fate among the stars. And we will helm massive star-faring vessels through territories as spectacular as they are dangerous. We've been working very hard um, just on the technology during three years. And today, we have a seamless online playground where we can travel across space at the speed of light. We can explore mysterious cities and discover unknown lands by ourselves or with friends. And we want you to participate in the making of this great adventure. Join our Space Monkey program. Mm. Today, and help us make Beyond Good and Evil a world that will challenge us and bring us together for thousand adventure, thrills, and fun. And um, please, if just join, join us. us, this is. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. You know, Gabriel and Michelle, you've done a fantastic job. It's amazing what uh, I've been, you have been able to achieve, and you and I, um, and all the teams, um, have the power of creating games that will amaze all the gamers. And I think video games can help us to grow and to get better. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now I would like to thank everyone here in the room and those who are watching us from home. Thank you for listening today and thank you for playing our games. So to all the teams at Ubisoft, thank you for your incredible imagination and enthusiasm. All of us here, we wish you all a lot of fun playing games this year. So thank you very much and have a great E3. Dude, that was, oh my God. Bringing in something that was just completely unexpected. Just wow! I didn't even recognize the game! 
I, I didn't even recognize it at all! Oh my god! Okay, wait, look, Dude. most importantly, okay. it's not over. The show is not over, folks. We're gonna send you back to the home. It home is home. for us. It is for us. Because it... Because... The stage show is over. And oh my god, Ubisoft gave us something awesome! It's just... What is it? Beyond Good and Evil, Evil 2. Oh my god. I didn't even recognize the game! I really didn't! Oh man. That that was a huge surprise because this was what, like Wait, when when did the first one come out? Let me let me let me check when the first one came out. It came out 14 years ago. The game came out 14 years ago. And we did not expect this to happen. We did not expect a sequel to happen. Oh my god. That that was just amazing. Seriously, that that's just amazing. Just what a great way to to end the conference. Oh my god. Oh god. Let me turn this down too. But oh my god. So yeah, we had we checked out Far Cry 5. There's a lot of stuff happening beneath in that. Um Uh Looks like Far Cry 5, well, at least with this trailer, was trying to do a more, uh, a little bit more of a lighthearted touch to it, trying to, try, trying to make it more, uh, for the action fans, it's, uh, And basically having people rock out to it and everything, it seems like. Um, uh, we get a little bit more of what the world will look like. Uh, uh, we also... Uh, what? We also got some, some uh, new... DLC for uh, for a steep uh, where they are basically going to the Olympics. Fix it. Uh, I've never played steep, but I do want to. I, I actually really do want to, though. Uh, Uh, I mean, again, I missed the beta for it. Uh, by the time I knew that there was a beta, it was already too late. It was like, like I only had like an hour to actually do something, and yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the I I only had like an hour left to actually check out the beta, and that would have been it. That yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, stuff like this is, uh, it, uh, Ubisoft made a very interesting, uh, uh, conference, uh, South Park is now coming out this October, uh, and they've got a mobile game called South Park Phone Destroyer, that, that actually looks interesting. Uh, and plus, how they marketed the 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 uh, game, how how they made the trailer look, <laughs> classic South Park fashion. Really, classic South Park fashion. Uh, they basically uh, basically over exaggerating uh, how the game. Uh, 
basically exaggerating the game and everything uh with uh with how they with how they uh uh first uh started uh how they first started uh the ad where they were talking about the cell phone and, and all the stuff you could do with it oh god but the thing is you can tell you could tell that they were pretty much uh you could tell that uh uh, come on. Uh, you could tell that they were very much trying to trying to exaggerate uh, with. Well, well. I already said that. Oh right. You could tell that it was uh, the people that 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 was the voice actors of South Park doing the commercial. Marshall, and that that's kind of where where you started realizing is this an, is this another South Park thing and of course it was um so what we we have got one yeah we've got one conference left I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cover the Nintendo conference no, I, I'm uh, that's tomorrow. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am going to cover the Sony conference uh, at nine o'clock tonight, uh, Eastern. Uh, so I will have my stream back up at eight forty-five. Uh, and of course, it's 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 the big one. It's the it's the one that we've all been waiting for. And so, yeah, so after all this, uh, hopefully we still see some, see some stuff happening. Uh, we're still waiting for Rockstar to, to make an appearance just right out of the blue with more stuff with, for, uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and everything. Uh, uh... Uh, oh man, I mean, really, w there's still some stuff that we're hoping will happen, uh, later on tonight, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it there, uh, thank you for watching, come back, uh, at around 8.45 for the Sony conference, let's see if, they will actually one up Microsoft. Yeah, they probably will. They they always do. No matter or what Microsoft does, Sony tends to always one up Microsoft. They they always do. So uh, until tonight, I so basically uh, come back tonight. Uh, Ashkai Ulto.